present in Asia and being a startup in Asia, there are specific areas, e-commerce, mobile, that sort of bubble to the top. Um, there was no mention about the value of technology or proprietary IP. Right. Uh, it was, there was much more focus on usage and adoption right. and new solutions. Right. So what value does um, IP. Yeah, IP play? I mean, specifically for IP, uh, depending on the stage of the company, right? And first of all, you need to understand that an IP play is more of a defense play. It's more less of a tech play in that sense. So when you're in startup mode, the last thing you want to do is to burn cash, right? Unless your particular company has a lot to do with IP. For instance, one of our popular company, MPL, has 80 patents, right, under their belt. And this company is only a Series A company. But to that end, what they're trying to do is to revolutionize the entire uh, video streaming space, which is very different compared to a company like ShopSpot, for instance, another one of popular company, which is more like mobile, commerce and such. So to the end, that particular company will be probably focusing more about user acquisition, you know, getting the LTV value rights, getting the, the, the cost per acquisition correct, right, versus the IP and such. So I would say, largely in Asia, the, the, the advice that we typically give to companies actually is to focus less on IP. I mean, IP will come naturally once you have a certain size like uh, like when you're on Facebook and such, you know, go and buy all the IPs from IBM and such, up to you. But uh, at this stage, when you are trying to prove the market, uh, you should go on and spend as much as possible to prove the market versus spending time on IP. That being said, it's not saying that you shouldn't pursue an IP strategy, but I think that it depends on what the company is focused. But as far as what I see, normally 80 to 90% of the companies we, we meet and eventually invest, uh, IP is not really the top of their priorities, at least you know, from a Series A perspective. But if you're a later stage, I would mention it, I suppose. Yes, sir. Yeah, so CPL is a telecom group. Yes. What are some of the effective ways that you're building a sustainable innovation pipeline to get back beyond investments? Right. So to that end, that's probably best directed to one of my colleagues that does innovation. But um, we have all kinds of initiatives, right? So investment is one. Um, we also tend to sponsor events, you know, like uh, E27, um, uh, across Southeast Asia and such, uh, I believe we have, I'm not sure whether it's public, but we have a contract with Runway and such, you know, to, to, to do these sort of things. And, and in each, uh, previously we have uh, what we call innovation labs. So effectively what this means is that we go around to the hotspots, innovation hotspots of the world. So for instance, Silicon Valley, uh, Israel, undisputed, right? So we'll go there and then we will partner with one of the largest um, SI companies or one of the largest companies in general, and then we will we will tell them, hey, look, this is our problem, right? So, for instance, um, loyalty program, uh, uh, I have a churn issue, right? Can you go and find out what is the best way to solve churn? So, to that end, we will be able. Uh, so, those innovation labs that we set up, the people will actually go around to the particular local country and look for talents there, right? And then give them these use these problems that we have. And then from which we will pick the best ideas and you know, try to incubate them locally and bring it back to the group. So this is just one way that you know we do it. But there's all kinds of uh, things that we do, grassroots, you know, to innovation labs and such and that. But lots of stuff. Yes. Where's uh, Mohan?